What's up, Planeswalkers? It's your boy K Dog. Got another fun video for you guys in this one. Gonna be looking at Gruel Lands. So, this one's all about just having lands in your hand or your graveyard. So, kind of a focus on the deck was uh, Cavalier of Flame. For two red, 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 you had a 6 5 Elemental Knight. And for one in red, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain haste until end of turn. So obviously you guys have probably seen this in Fires of Invention decks, as you can basically play it for free, and then activate it, and then have mana left over to activate its ability, and attack in with, uh, you know, perhaps multiple Cavalier of Flames, or Kenrith, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, we're not doing all that. We're trying to play more of a fair deck, and uh, just kind of uh, make it work on its own uh, volition. And uh, so when... When it enters the battlefield, discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. So we can discard lands, which help fuel its uh, dies trigger, which is when it dies, it deals X damage to each opponent and each Planeswalker they control, where X is the number of land cards in your graveyard. So this is kind of a just nice way to ref refuel in the uh, late game and to uh, put lands in the graveyard. So that when this, uh, if your opponent has spot removal or sweepers, things like that, then uh, whenever it dies, you still have a way to deal damage to your opponent. And we have plenty of ways to uh, get lands in our hand to discard or to go to our graveyard. So let's, uh, let's go back to the beginning of the deck here. Uh, in the one drop slot, we're going to be playing four Elvish Reclaimers. It's a 1-2 for 1. So pretty decent body in of itself can be aggressive or defensive with that two toughness uh, has a nice upside and synergy here with uh, getting plus two plus two as long as there are three or more land cards in your graveyard so that's pretty sweet so even if you get this in the later game it should be a three four more often than not and if you need to search for a particular land you can pay two and tap it sacrifice the land and search your library for a land card to put it onto the battlefield tap then shuffle your library so we do have a lot of uh, double and triple red and green. So if you're missing one of those, you can always just hold this back uh, and then activate its ability to get that land that you need. And uh, it will buff itself up in the process. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, we're going to be running two of Nessian Wanderer. So one, three for two. And whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, Look at the top three cards of your library, and you can reveal a land card from among them, and it goes to your hand. And the rest go on the bottom of your library. So just as a two of, as a way to kind of, since we don't have a ton of enchantment synergy, but we do have a little bit, just enough to really get some value off of this to uh, add lands to our hand, if we just need them for discarding, if we need them to actually play out, so we can curve out. Um, is it? Just a two of, since it is just a one three, and it's not always going to be uh, getting value off those enchantments. So we do have four Scola Grave Dancers, which is an enchantment creature. So that's an enchantment. Uh, whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain one life. So since we're going to be putting lands into our graveyard, this will definitely uh, gain us some life over the course of a game. So this will help us out against uh, more aggressive base decks and also fuels its own ability as you can pay three to put the top card of your library into your graveyard. I uh, haven't really activated this too much but it is always there as an option. Uh, we were running three Binding of the Titans so here's another enchantment. Uh, when it enters each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard so obviously any lands would trigger some of these cards that you've just seen. Uh, the second saga is exile up to two target cards from graveyards, and for each creature card exiled this way, you gain one life. So that's great against uh, you know anybody who's got escape uh, spells. We can just exile them after we've milled them, and we can uh, probably gain a little bit of life in the process. And then the third saga is return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. So if we need lands and discard, if we need lands to curve out, if we play this on like our second turn maybe, we can just get a land back and uh, you know play that uh, Living Twister or whatever we need. 
on the following turns. Or in the later game, we can just get one of our creatures back. So definitely has some nice synergy in our deck. Uh, we are running four district guides. It's a 2-2-4-3, two, two, so not great. But we do get to search for a basic land, reveal it, and put it into our hand. So again, if we're just looking to curve out, we can just play this on turn three, get a land, and continue curving out with on, our, on our following turns. Or if we just need lands in our hand to discard, then uh, yeah, the land goes to our hand, and we have that option as well. And uh, here's the first way we actually get to use that. Living Twister is a 2-5 for red, red, and green. Uh, so we can pay one and a red to discard one of those land cards and uh, deal two damage to any target. And uh, if we have too many lands out, if we flood it out a little bit, we can always play green to return a tap land you control to its owner's hand. And then obviously we have to pay two more to discard it and deal two damage. So it is, can be a little mana intensive, but uh, it's definitely come in handy a few times. And then uh, the four drop slot was... Uh, Kind of a work in progress so this is kind of what i've come up with so far uh, just get some enchantment synergy and to buff up some of our uh, one two and three drops and uh, just as a piece of removal since we don't have any uh, removal so far in our deck we run two of Iroas's blessing three and a red for an aura enchant creature you control when it enters the battlefield, it deals 4 damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. So being able to hit creatures or planeswalkers is pretty sweet. And then the enchanted creature gets plus 1, plus 1. So not great, but it's definitely uh, pretty decent. So that's why we're just running the 2 of. And then uh, we're going to try a Tectonic Giant as a 3-4 for 2 red red. Whenever it attacks or becomes a target of a spell on opponent controls, we can either deal 3 damage to each opponent or exile the top two cards of our library and uh, we get to choose one and until the end of our next turn we can play that card. So we basically have about two turns to uh, play the card that we have chosen. So this is kind of a could be either to push across extra damage or a card advantage depending on where we're at in the game. And then we're going to be running uh, two of the Acroan War. So this is kind of a pseudo board wipe and spot removal. As one enters, we gain control of target creature for as long as the Crowan War remains on the battlefield. The second saga is until your next turn, creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able. So we do have some pretty decent uh, creatures that we don't necessarily mind jump blocking with if we need to. And then we'll hopefully get their best creature with the first saga. And uh, the board wipe, though, is the third saga where each tap creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. This will be one-sided uh, because obviously this will be after we've untapped. And also finishing out our four drop slot, we're going to try uh, two Arasta of the Endless Web. Just a nice three five for four, two green green. And uh, it does have reach, so it's good against uh, defensive creature, against ground or air-based uh, creatures our opponents have. And also has nice upside against sort of uh, mid range and control decks, where whenever opponent casts an instant or sorcery, we get a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach. Obviously not really great if they cast a board wipe, because we lose the token. But against like spot removal or... Um, any uh, counter spells, things like that, we uh, at least get a creature out of it. And we've seen the three Cavalier of Flames. And then we're going to try one Ox of Agonis. It's a 4-2 for 5, 3 red red. When it enters the battlefield, uh, we discard our hand, then draw three cards. So just kind of a nice way to refuel in the late game, especially if we don't have any cards in hand, we just get to draw three. And uh, if we do have cards in our hand, maybe like lands or something, it's just another way to kind of fill up our graveyard for the Cavalier of Flame. Uh, the Escape is red, red, and exile eight other cards from our graveyard. So hopefully those aren't land cards, but, you know, we'll uh, just kind of see where it's at with that. It's not something I've really played around with, but I do want to try it. So I could have some nice synergy here. And it does escape with a plus one, plus one counter on it. 
So obviously escape works really well against removal heavy decks as we can force them to have extra removal to deal with it as we can just bring it back multiple times. And we're going to run just a one of Cavalier of Thorns. As it does have a little bit of synergy, but it's not great. But just a perfectly uh, fine creature in and of itself as a 5-6 for 2 green, green, green. It does have Reach. Since we're not too... Uh, since we don't have any flyers, basically the Arasta and the Cavalier of Thorns are the only way we can kind of defend ourselves against uh, flying creatures. Uh, when it enters, we reveal the top five cards and get to put a land card from them onto the battlefield. And then the rest go into our graveyard. So it is another way to kind of fuel lands for the Cavalier of Flame. And has the nice upside of when it dies. We can exile it and then put any card from our graveyard on top of our library. So we can fix our next draw step basically whatever we want to get back and uh since we are pretty mid-rangey we're gonna run two ember cleave uh just kind of a nice nice finisher like obviously putting this on cavalier of flames is uh it's pretty sweet and uh, going over our mana base here uh, we are mostly green so we're gonna be running six mountains eight forests uh four stomping grounds just the two Temple of Abandons, because we want to want to run all four Fabled Passage, just extra lands to uh, fill up our graveyard and trigger some of our other land synergies. <clears throat> That's the main deck, and just kind of going over the sideboard real quick. Uh, so for some spot removal, depending on the matchup, we have two Lava Coils, uh, two Scorching Dragon Fires, as we can target creatures or Planeswalkers. And uh, four Destiny Spinners against uh, control heavy decks. Three Cinder Vines, also for the control decks, as whenever an opponent casts a non creature spell, Cinder Vines deals one damage to that player. And then we can also sacrifice it to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. And we also get to deal two damage to that controller uh, as well. And a couple Storm's Wrath to protect ourselves against uh, creature heavy decks, as it deals four damage to each creature and each. Planeswalker. And then finally against control decks, we also have two Chandra. Awakened Inferno. As a six mana six loyalty planeswalker that cannot be countered, and then you plus two her to uh, give your opponent an emblem where uh, deals one damage to that up that player at the beginning of their upkeep. And also some nice spot removal as a uh, pseudo sweeper dealing three damage to each non-elemental creature if you minus three her or you can minus x to, to deal damage to your creature or a planeswalker and exile that permanent so that's pretty sweet <clears throat> now let's jump into some best of three matches and see how it does so i've played around with it a little bit but could probably use a little bit of refining but i'm mostly happy with where it's at so yeah, let's just jump in and just kind of uh, explore together how this deck does. <clears throat> it's always fun taking cards that other people kind of uh, have forgotten about or overlooked and uh, try to figure out ways to make them work. I mean, there's pretty decent land synergy and I was kind of surprised to see how much there is in some of the newer cards from uh, Theros. All right, up against Zap Dad seven seven seven, and we get to go first. Perfect. All right, so we can curve out here, so that's pretty sweet. Our Elvish Reclaimer down, and I think we'll just get our Scola Grave Dancer down next turn, and then follow up with our Binding of Titans. Yeah, our opponent with the Fabled Passage, and they're just gonna reveal right away what it is they're playing. Black. Okay. Let's go and get our uh, mountain down, play our Skola Grave Dancer, and crash in for one. Okay, Vampire of the Dire Moon. Oh, I'm fine with trading if they want to trade. Our 1 2 is not really getting any better anytime soon. It's going to be a little while. And we're going to have to figure out some way to deal with this uh, Death Toucher, where we did draw the Acro in War, so that's pretty sweet. All right, so that's one option to exile with the Binding of Titans. So yeah, let's uh, get that down and see what we get. 
Oh, Kunaros. Okay, so it's like they're kind of the Orzov Knights with some extra stuff going on. Okay, uh, I think we want to get rid of Kunaros for sure, and probably the Commander. Alright, so we are stuck on lands here a little bit. Uh, next turn we do get a creature or a land back. Uh, unfortunately we do not have any lands. Oh, it's just attack. Don't we have any good ways to deal with these uh, death touch creatures. And we'll have our choices on what we get back next turn. Fen Roker. It's going to go before we cast that. Guess we'll get back one of you guys. Uh, the Skull of Grave Dancer. Hmm. The Crow and War feels a little early. So we'll just uh, get a creature down of our own and see what our opponent can follow up with. Looks like we're both kind of missing our land drops here. And they're uh, one mana short of being able to activate the Fenlurker, so no problem attacking in. And the question is, do we want to uh, play our Crow and War just to be uh, mana efficient, or do we want to try to save it for a better opportunity? Like they could have some more problematic creatures with Death Touch and things like that, so just hang on to it. Fen lurkers are certainly annoying, but what are you gonna do? Okay, it's a district guide. Definitely want to get that out and grab a uh, mountain. All right, and again, no reason not to attack. Our opponent could have uh, held that back there to double block, but I guess they felt getting in for one damage was more important. Now we're looking for a third red source here to get the Cavalier of Flame online. And our opponent did, continues to miss land drops. We'll take it. Oh, man. Fabled Passage. So now we get the trigger of the Skull of Grave Dancer. We gain a life back. Grab our third red source to get our Cavalier of Flame down. And... Put another land in the graveyard for the Cavalier of Flame when it dies. So we're in pretty outstanding shape here. Our opponent not ready to block yet. We'll just discard the Crown. Hmm. No, let's discard both. Okay, we draw another Living Twister anyway, so that worked out. Opponent continuing to miss land drops. Okay, let's keep putting lands in our graveyard. And I think we just attack in and activate Cavalier. Double blocking in this spot seems a little suspect. So let's punish them. Chump block the Cavalier of Flame there just to stay alive. But I guess they were not aware of its activated ability. Okay, definitely want Storm's Wrath here. I think the Crone War could still be uh, useful. Hmm. Actually, I think we'll leave the Giant in and take out Arasta. For the Storm's Wrath. I uh, probably want to bring in some of our spot removal here. Let's 
since we are bringing in our sweepers, I think we can shave off some of our earlier creatures. We do have white, but we didn't see any banishing lights or things like that. We could bring in a cinder vines just to have some protection. Chandra could be decent here as well for the removal. Uh, I think we'll hedge our bets and just bring in a cinder vines in case they do have some um, banishing lights or things like that. They seem pretty creature based, so I don't know if we'll get too much value out of the instant and sorcery side of things, as far as cinder vines or even Arasta. Okay, and of course we draw our cinder vines. Oh, we can uh, temple scry, get our scholar grave dancer down. Like Cavalier of Flame, but we're pretty far from actually being able to cash in on it. And the Binding of Titans can help us get there though, so let's uh, keep it since it is one of our more important spells. Okay, our opponent found their white this time, so should be a much better game from them. The free attack for one, gain one. We just want to get our own creature down. And we can use Binding of Titans just to kind of get back whatever creatures that uh, die off from their removal or death touch. Murderous Rider, so there's some removal right there. Crow and War is not bad. Living Twister. Uh, next turn we could uh, Binding plus Cinder Vines, or we could uh, Crow and War. And they'll probably just play their uh, Murderous Rider down. Okay, another Vampire of the Dire Moon. Not gonna block your one. Hmm. This district guide is tempting. Let's get that vampire on our side. And if they want to attack in, we'll trade, so that'll be a nice way for us to deal with it. And next turn, I think we'll District Guide plus uh, Binding of the Titans with the land that we get. Pretty easy block there. Do you want to get this in Cavalier down next turn? Let's attack first and see what they do. No removal. Get our red source. Now let's just play out our red source. Let's get our cinder vines down and just uh, give ourselves a little bit of protection from instant sorceries and enchantments. And next turn we can play Cavalier. And the rest right on cue. They can take our Binding of Titans, that's fine. Not particularly uh, dependent on that card. So Dress is a curious card since we showed them mostly uh, creatures. Okay, our opponent still has this Murderous Rider they can play any time. And two cards in hand. Looking through their own graveyard, so it looks like they have some way to get back uh, a creature, maybe. Omen of the Dead or something like that. Shattered in the sky. Yeah, I mean, 
we get to follow that up with the Cavalier Flame, so... Seems pretty sweet to me. Yeah, our opponent's still holding on to their murderous rider. Burglar Rat. Okay, always an annoying card. As long as they don't have some removal for our Cavalier, we should be fine. And, uh, chump block it. I'm fine with holding the mountain in hand. If they want to go for the discard effect, then that's fine. Just fuels our Cavalier of Flames die trigger. Wow, Cavalier of Dawn. Okay, so we get a 3-3 out of it. And we get to deal some damage to them. Of course, now we have a 3-3, and their uh, Murderous Rider cannot attack. Exiling that is fine, and then holding back our 3-3 here to jump block, maybe, or see what else our opponent has. Okay, and our opponent just uh, activating the Castle Ardendale right away. Turn our cavalier will give us pretty sweet attack. Activating the castle locked away immediately to get a draw a card. Okay, and burglar rat. And and attacking with your cavalier? Nope. Well, we can get rid of their 1-1s, one but we lose our 3-3 three, three in the process. We do something about this board, so let's attack in and see how they block. Playing it safe with the chump lock. Sure. Pass the turn. <clears throat> Figure out some way to deal with this Cavalier of Dawn. It dodges all of our removal. Mostly a creature based deck. Obviously, in a Crow in War would be pretty sweet. Okay, attacking in for four. We're one land off of being able to play the second Cavalier and activating it. We'll just keep attacking and. Uh, See what they do. They have the 1-1 one, one token they can easily just chump block with. If they're not going to block, then we'll uh, try to get some value off of, off of this golem. Knock him down to 6, or 5. Okay, opponent two cards in hand. They have uh, all the mana in the world, though, to make tokens or draw cards. Uh, drawing cards is getting pretty risky. As they're down to three now. Nightmare 
Shepard. It's a pretty good draw for them. Cavalier of Dawn is definitely a problem, though. Six toughness and the vigilance is uh, not something we can easily overcome. might have it. Our opponent giving us the good game. Okay, give haste. So unless they have removal, then should be GG. Good game. Wow, that was, uh, was pretty close. That is down to six. But the uh, Cavalier of Flame came through in the clutch. All right, so just kind of a fun little uh, land-based synergy there with Cavalier of Flame and some other creatures. Uh, yeah, so something a little bit different. Hope you guys uh, give it a try and enjoyed watching the video. And I look forward to seeing the next one. All right, take care.